The Lord be with you. And also with you. Dear friends in Christ, at the dawn of this most holy day, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites folk throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. We remember his death and celebrate his resurrection, confident that we shall share his victory and live with him forever in God. Holy God, you gave your name to Moses from the burning bush. By the blessing of this new fire, bring us to stand with awe on this holy ground. Our eyes are light with the glory we have seen in Christ, and our hearts are flame with resurrection joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us now listen attentively, recalling how God saved humanity throughout history and in the fullness of time sent Jesus Christ to be our Redeemer. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning. The first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning. The second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth and it was so god made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth and across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, 
Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all in their multitude and on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. Confite mi ni domino, quoni amoros. Confite mi ni domino, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, you created all things in wonderful beauty and order. Help us now to perceive how still more wonderful is the new creation, by which in the fullness of time you redeemed your people through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Paschal Lamb, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Confite mini domino, quoniam bonus. Confite mini domino, alleluia. God of steadfast love, by the power of your mighty arm, you once delivered your chosen people through the waters of the Red Sea and gave us a sign of our salvation through the waters of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may rejoice with Miriam and Moses in your saving work through Jesus Christ, our Paschal Lamb, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, 
so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteousness their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, and it shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Convite mini domino Quoniam bonus Convite mini domino Alleluia O oh God, by the power of your word, you have created all things, and by your spirit you renew the earth. Give now the water of life to those who thirst for you, that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Paschal Lamb, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Yesterday and today the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time and all ages belong to him. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord Guard us and keep us. Amen.
May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, O universe, dance around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the victorious trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth in glory, revealing the splendor of your creation. Radiant in the brightness of your triumphant King, Christ has conquered. Now his life and glory fill you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, exalt in glory. The risen Saviour, our Lord of life, shines upon you. Let all God's people sing and shout for joy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and good that with hearts and minds and voices we should praise you, Father Almighty, the unseen God. Through your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who saved us by his death, 
paid the price of Adam's sin and reconciled us once again to you. For this is the Passover feast, when Christ, the true Lamb of God, is slain, whose blood consecrates the homes of all the faithful. This is the day when you first saved our ancestors, freeing Israel from her slavery and leading her safely through the sea. This is the day when Jesus Christ vanquished hell, broke the chains of death, and rose triumphant from the grave. This is the day when all who believe in him are freed from sin, restored to grace and holiness, and share the victory of Christ. This is the day that gave us back what we had lost beyond our deepest dreams. You made even us sin a happy fault, crowning glory of all feasts. Evil and hatred are put to flight, and sin is washed away, lost innocence regained, and morning turned to joy. Feast truly blessed, when hatred is cast out, peace and justice find a home, and heaven is joined to earth and all creation reconciled to you. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in this our Easter joy, accept our sacrifice of praise, your Church's solemn offering. Grant that this Easter candle may make our darkness light. For Christ the morning star is risen in glory. Christ is risen from the dead, and his flame of love still burns within us. Christ sheds his peaceful light on all the world. Christ lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Renew your church with the spirit given in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and shine as a light in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives. He lives to God so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please join us now as we sing the hymn 362, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said greetings and they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. For the Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How do we greet a new Easter day when we cannot gather together? We won't be popping the champagne corks and going on an Easter egg hunt. And, worse still, Easter Monday will come and we will be there having another day at home. Some people even talked about putting Easter off this year. Maybe they thought we could celebrate it just before Christmas and have a really big collection of feast days. Now, while I can see why someone may say this, I think it is missing one of the biggest points about Easter. On the first Easter, there was no sense that everything was suddenly okay. The disciples were not hovering at the tomb waiting to see Jesus arise from the dead. Most of them were confused and frightened. They were shut away in their houses, not knowing what the future would hold. Maybe this year then, as some clever church memes have already recognised, this could be a much more authentic Easter day than we have ever experienced before. So we come to this new day, hearing again the good news of Jesus' resurrection, knowing that light will never be extinguished by darkness and that love and life will have the last word. But we will still be in our houses tomorrow and for so many tomorrows to follow. Where do you find life? Right here, right now, in this present moment in history in which we find ourselves. Because here's the thing, resurrection happens. Resurrection always happens without us having to be in the right building, the right mood, or the right frame of mind. The God of life is not restrained by locked rooms, closed doors, or months of social isolation. Christ meets us wherever, whenever, and however we are. So maybe the first thing we need to hear on this new Easter day is the same thing the two faithful Marys heard when they went to see the tomb. Do not be afraid. Christ is risen. Now normally we come to this part of the service where we bless some water and I have a wonderful time splashing it round the whole congregation. We can't do that this year, so I'm inviting you to find some water at home. Find yourself a bowl, a sink, a basin, a jug. And as you consider the gift of this water, let us pray. Gracious God, we celebrate our creation and redemption. We give thanks for the gift of water which gives fruitfulness to the fields and refreshes and cleanses us. You chose water to show your goodness when you led your people to freedom through the Red Sea and satisfied their thirst in the desert with water from the rock. Water was a symbol used by the prophets to foretell your new covenant with humanity. You made the water of baptism holy by Christ's baptism in the Jordan. By it, you gave us a new birth and renewed us in holiness. May this water remind us of our baptism and enable us to share the joy of the baptised. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Through this Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in his baptism, so that we may rise with him to new life. Our Lenten observance being ended, we affirm, reaffirm the faith we embraced at our baptism. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in God the Son? I, I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's Lord, only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We ask you maybe consider using that water and remembering each time you run a tap this week to recall your baptism. Let us pray. God of light, we joyfully greet your messengers and the hope of an empty tomb. Let your light reveal the hope of the resurrection in our hearts to melt the fear and the selfishness within and around us. Guide us to your truth and love, to be your hands in kitchens and living rooms and in workplaces of essential services. Hold gently the grieving, the sick and the dying. And may the light of your coming dawn on us all. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So to you all now, wherever you are, a very happy Easter. As we greet this new day together, we are very mindful of you all in homes, sitting and watching and sharing in this new beginning. There are many ways to connect with the community here at St Andrews. We have a YouTube channel, a Facebook page and a website which gives details of many things that are uh, happening online. We also have a podcast called On The Way which we share with St John's Cathedral and we've just released a new episode of that called Discipleship at a Distance with Jim Shermer. It explores uh, how we be and follow Christ at this time of social distancing. We also are having morning prayer by Zoom on weekdays and all the details on how to connect with that go home in an email but will be also on our website. Please don't hesitate to be in touch if there is any way we can support you at home. And now we're going to sing our final hymn and we hope you'll join with us at home. Hymn number 308, Yours Be the Glory. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For 
the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So to you all now, wherever you are, a very happy Easter. As we greet this new day together, we are very mindful of you all in homes, sitting and watching and sharing in this new beginning. There are many ways to connect with the community here at St Andrews. We have a YouTube channel, a Facebook page and a website which gives details of many things that are uh, happening online. We also have a podcast called On The Way which we share with St John's Cathedral and we've just released a new episode of that called Discipleship at a Distance with Jim Shermer. It explores uh, how we be and follow Christ at this time of social distancing. We also are having morning prayer by Zoom on weekdays and all the details on how to connect with that go home in an email but will be also on our website. Please don't hesitate to be in touch if there is any way we can support you at home. And now we're going to sing our final hymn and we hope you'll join with us at home. Hymn number 308, Yours Be the Glory. into all the world be upon you now and forever. Amen. The blessing of the Holy Spirit who fills the church with joy and peace be upon you now and forever. Amen. And the blessing of God, the holy and glorious Trinity, be upon you and remain with you now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Amen.